I like to discuss topics related to infrared photography. In a previous video, I covered the secret to white balance in infrared photography. In this video, I'd like to answer your questions about infrared white balance. Why do you set white balance in infrared photography? What are the correct white balance settings for infrared? Should you set your white balance in camera or while editing? Which editors are best for white balance? Does white balance matter in black and white infrared or full spectrum photography? And finally, we'll set the white balance on a number of images in a new way and with more examples. White balance essentially performs a color shift, all without the need for specialized color mapping tools. This works well for infrared since white balance tools are common in raw image editors. Adjusting the white balance for digital color infrared images is essentially a color mapping hack. We adjust white balance to shift the colors of our infrared images. There is no correct white balance setting. There's no Kelvin value that works for all situations. The settings you select are a result of a unique combination of your camera sensor, the IR cutoff filter used, the lighting conditions, and your creative choices. In the upcoming examples, I'll show you how to select the white balance settings for your image. When should you set your white balance in camera? If you're shooting JPEG, you'll get better results if you set your white balance in camera. This is most commonly seen in infrared converted point and shoot cameras, which may not have the ability to save RAW files. If you shoot raw and you prefer to spend your time getting the white balance settings right in camera, then you can certainly set white balance in camera, it's just not required. If you shoot JPEG and set white balance in camera, you don't need to get the white balance perfect, you will still have some white balance controls in your editor, however they're not as flexible as raw, so you'll want to get the white balance close to your desired settings when shooting in JPEG. When should you set your white balance during editing? If you shoot in RAW, it's very easy to set the white balance while editing. Setting your white balance while editing gives you more flexibility to change values since you're making the adjustments in Kelvin instead of in just a blue-yellow tint. I prefer to shoot RAW, not worry about white balance while shooting, and set it in post. If you shoot RAW, you can also do both. You can set white balance in camera and change it while editing. Most raw editors with a white balance picker will allow you to set a good white balance. The picker allows you to select which colors in the image will remain neutral. Nearly all raw editors have a white balance picker. The auto white balance for most editors does not work well on infrared images. Auto white balance is designed for visible light images. Auto white balance can work surprisingly well on some infrared images with editors such as RAW Therapy or Pixelmator. A great complement to white balance is color balance. Color balance tools typically offer three tint sliders, cyan and red, magenta and green, and yellow and blue, each of which can be applied to the highlights, midtones, and shadows. Color balance can help you create natural looking colors, which I know sounds odd for infrared, but it's true. Color balance can be helpful on images with mixed lighting where a single white balance setting is too limiting. Unfortunately, not all raw editors have color balance. For black and white infrared photography, such as shot with a 750 nanometer or higher cutoff filter, white balance will have an impact on the exposure and contrast of your image, but it's not needed for color. Let's take a look at a couple examples. Here's a infrared image that I've converted to black and white with a monochrome profile. If I take the white balance temperature slider and slide that back and forth, you'll see that it essentially the colors are shifting around. What little color there is in this image is shifting around back and forth. So I can see that it impacts the brightness and the contrast of the image. Let's take a look at another example. This image was also converted to monochrome with a monochrome profile. This time, take a look at the histogram as I drag the slider back and forth. You'll see that both the changes to the image and to the histogram, which is basically some slight changes to the exposure and to contrast as I move the slider back and forth. All right, let's take a look at one more example. Another image converted to a monochrome profile, another infrared image. If I move the slider, you can see that the, the brightness changes, the contrast changes as I shift the slider around. 
but these are all changes that I could make with exposure, contrast, uh, tone curve, other tools. So you don't need to adjust the white balance for black and white images. You're probably better off using other tools that are better designed for adjusting your exposure and contrast to manipulate black and white images. In full spectrum photography, you're capturing near ultraviolet light, all visible light, and near infrared light. You may wish to use white balance settings that are similar to what you would use for visible light photography. Let's take a look at some examples. In this image, I can use the white balance picker to select the clouds and set a white balance. In full spectrum, you may wish to use the slider more and experiment with different values because the colors are so unusual. You may find that that simply matching something neutral like the clouds doesn't quite give you the creative freedom that you're looking for. So feel free to experiment with the temperature slider in full spectrum. Here's another image where we could use the clouds to select a value. One thing that you might find in full spectrum more so than other forms of infrared photography is you may find yourself using the green magenta tint slider more. That's because the colors in full spectrum are so unusual. The green and magenta slider can enhance the colors in an image or really bring some vibrance to some of those colors. Here's another full spectrum image. In this image, we don't see as much of the sky, so it may be that the white balance isn't as critical and we want to take some more creative liberties. So I might set a white balance on the sky to get a starting point and see what that looks like, uh, but maybe I want this to be a little bolder. So let's slide this around. Going to the yellow side gives me a more pale look. Blue side's a little colder. Maybe instead I'll play with the tint slider. Yeah, the I really like the reds, the magenta colors that are coming out there. So maybe, maybe using the, an extreme version of tint creates the pop that I really want in this kind of an image. In my previous video on white balance, we selected a color profile which would give us the better range of white balance and then we could use the white balance picker and select something like in this particular image there's some there's a couple different colors of clouds here we've got some just over the the mountains maybe more of a fog and then we've got these other clouds up here so you could see the teal color that that would produce or you could pick clouds in the sky and see some differences there you could also pick the sand which would give you a different tone or you could pick the surf so there's a lot of options in this image uh, let's go with the clouds here but the challenge is that you then need to envision what would happen with a color swap so you're, you're having to pick a color and then go over to Photoshop to swap the colors or invert the colors it would take some experimentation to do that back and forth or you'd have to just develop that skill set in your brain to be able to see where things were going and visualize it so you could develop that skill but it's still a little tricky to know exactly how the colors are going to look after an invert well the technique that i use now uses the lut based profiles which does that conversion right here so if i look at one of those i can select my channel mixer for a 590 image and I can close that and now we can see the colors are much more close to what I would see in a final image and the benefit here is that as I select the white balance so here's that white balance on that cloud white balance on the other clouds white balance on the sand or on the surf now we can see the direct impact that our white balance selection is going to have on an image so let's quickly apply some settings here so that I can see what this would look like as a final image We'll do a quick auto, set some uh, curve, add the contrast, and maybe add a little clarity and dehaze. Okay, so let's say this was what my final image was. Now I can, because of this LUT based profile, I can still go back and change the white balance. I could pick different parts of the image. That, that gives me a little warmer tone, the sand the surf or even better I can go in and adjust the slider and see now in real time what my finished image will look like what the colors will look like so I get a, a real preview and so this gives me a lot more flexibility not just have to pre-envision what my final image looks like but to actually be able to get closer to it while I'm setting my white balance and to have more control of the image 
by setting the white balance. That's the beauty of working with one of these LUT-based profiles. So if you use Lightroom or Photoshop, then I highly recommend that you build one of these LUT-based profiles because it will give you a lot more control in your editing. Okay, let's take a look at some 720 nanometer images. The first thing I'll do is select a profile. I will go down to my LUT-based profiles, and I have a couple for 720. So I'll pick the one that uses a channel mixer. And now we can see I've got much closer to what my final image looks like. I have my subdued blue sky. I have my white grass. I can use my color picker. And so very quickly, I can see a preview of the direction that my image is heading. Let's take a look at another 720 image. I'll change the profile. With 720, you can certainly set values, the white balance value in the cloud, but frequently you'll find that the best value will come from using grass. And finally, here's another 720 nanometer image. This one has no, not much of a sky, so you've got a little bit of a, a different control over it. So let's select a, a profile. I'm going to use the invert profile for this one. We will set a white balance on these ferns here in the foreground but because there's no sky maybe I want to have more creativity so that I can use my sliders to play around and because I'm using these LUT based profiles I'm going to get a more accurate preview more flexibility to be able to adjust my white balance and see what the outcome is without having to jump over to another program and, and do that there. Let's take a look at some 590 nanometer images. I've created some presets to allow me to quickly pick up one of my LUT-based profiles, and then I can dive right into white balancing with my picker. The clouds could be a, a good example in this image, but we've also got some rocks. That'll give me a different bit of a different shade. We've got some surf that I could use there. There's some rocks in the shade here, and that's going to give me a different tone. So lots of options in an image like this to be able to select white balance. Next image, I will set my profile and we'll start with the tree usually in an image like this where there's no clouds or or no other elements to pick from i'll look at the bark uh, the bark is what i want to be more of a neutral tone and that typically works well if i find that the values are capping out at uh, 50,000. if that looks okay i can stick with that but otherwise i could try one of my other profiles and see if that gives me a different look so you can see here with the 720 profile that i get a, a look that gives me a little bit more flexibility because now I can slide I can use this slider to make adjustments to get the white balance that I like here we've got another image a lot of choices here I could select white balance from the cloud uh, that's probably going to give me a pretty good look but I could also use the trunk of the tree so in this image I will set my profile and then I can white balance. Typically in an image like this, I'll white balance on the grass. Uh, that'll give me a good look. I've also got some neutral tones here in this fence post. I can try those out. And I think I like the grass a little bit better in this case. Uh, it gets me some nice sort of vibrant whites here, but I can still see a little bit of color in the background and a nice color in the sky. So this image has some really nice options to work with. I could white balance. I've got a little bit of clouds. I could pick up little clouds in the sky. That gives me a nice warm look. Or I could white balance on the grass. Uh, that might give me a little bit more of a neutral tone. Or I could white balance on the trunk, various spots on the trunk to see what that would look like. So lots of Lots of good options here with this image. If you look at the navigator in the upper left hand corner, you get a preview of what this looks like. This is another benefit of, of using one of these LUT based profiles is I get a nice preview and you can just roll around the image where the, the picker is. You can see a real time preview of what the white balance will look like and that's very nice. So instead of just picking an image and then hitting W and picking again and picking again, you could just roll around the image and get a preview of what you like and when you find the value, then select it and you're all set. So in this image, we've got a couple options. Typically the, the grass or the dirt maybe here in this case uh, will be good, but also usually the uh, bench, uh, the wood tones of a bench pro will provide a nice uh, neutral option to work with. Here we've got lots of options in this image. So we've got the clouds in the sky. Uh, that will give me a nice starting point. We've also got rocks various rocks in the background, rocks in the foreground. You could also look at the shaded side of rocks will give you a slightly different tone compared to the sunlit side of a rock. Plus we've got the beach here. So really, again, we're looking for any sort of neutral 
tone, we want to decide what in the what in the image is neutral, and then that will create pop of colors with the rest of the image. So in this case, it's the sky that we're looking to pop, and it's the organic materials along the beach that we're looking to pop. Similar here, we've got some clouds to work with, but we've also got sand, and we've got rocks. I think the sand here gives me a great separation of color between uh, the organic material that you see uh, in the in the water uh, and the blue color of the water. We've got clouds to work with. Uh, we have rocks, but we also have some other neutral elements. So in the case of this uh, uh, this telescope here, the pole here, could you could set that to be a neutral tone, uh, and that's another option. So roads, sidewalks, concrete, there's a whole variety of things that you might wish to be the neutral element in the image that would create pop in other colors. Here's another example of an overcast day. So I can pick with the clouds. Clouds are really easy to pick from, but I've also got a lot of structures here that I could pick from that will give me some slightly different tones. And if you were to pick on the organic material in this image and try to neutralize that, you're not going to be able to do that. Instead, you'll create a bit of a blue cast in the rest of the image. So for an overcast image like this, it's best to stick with something that's closer to white. So in this image, I have a number of choices. I have the grass, which I could white balance on. That will give me one look. I have the road. That would give me another look. I also have some neutral tones in this barn building that I could select from, the roof or the side. Those are really good. So lots of choices here. I think the grass, yeah, that grass is a good look. I like, kind of like the barn. That gives me a, a little bit of a warmer tone. You can also, once you've made those selections, you can you can adjust and play if I want it. If I want it a little warmer, because I'm using the LUT-based profile, everything's reversed, so it's going to be uh, warmer to the left and cooler to the right, so I can make this a little bit warmer, or I can make it a little bit cooler, depending on the, the final outcome that I was looking for. Now, this image was really interesting uh, because I edited this image a, a few different times, and I, I kept getting a different result, and it was really fascinating to me. If I do the obvious thing of clicking here on the uh, the grass, you can see I've got, I've got pretty nice colors. I, I like where this, you know, I like the color of the sky, the tree, the grass. You can see if I click on the bark of the tree, I get a more sort of distinct white here than if I click on the grass. And in some of the edits that I did, I would find that a warmer grass was really interesting. In fact, it's kind of hard to see here, but if I kick up like the dehaze and the clarity a bit, and you can see a little bit more detail in the grass, I could go with a warmer look, or I could go with a cooler look where the grass was more distinct. There's really no right or wrong answer here. And in fact, I was, I've, I've been really torn with this particular image. Do I like, do I like the cooler look of the grass and, and how that sets off from everything else? Or do I like the, the warmer look at the grass? that creates a whole different feel. So it's 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 kind of about the, the, the feeling that you want the image to evoke. Do you have any additional questions about white balance? Do you have any topics related to infrared photography that you'd like to see addressed? Leave a comment below. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks.